Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. I got some uh, tools to play here in the dark with. Uh, these are kind of interesting. Um, I'll talk about the cases in a moment, but first let's get to the good stuff. Um, first of all, this little guy, which tiny, um, is a Carson um, infrared uh, night vision scope. Now, if you use infrared, what you have to do is actually have some source um, infrared is a longer wavelength than the traditional visible light. Red is the shortest or the longest wavelength we can see. Infrared is a little longer. Sometimes we sense it as heat. But what happens with the uh, infrared viewers is it's picking up a usable wavelength um, often in when there's low light that actually can be converted into a wavelength we can see. And all you need is a little um, optical system maybe a, an infrared emitter, that's what this thing is. It actually sends out infrared um, that bounces off the target and then pops back and then you can see it. And then a way to focus it because it focuses on a different plane than the visible wavelengths that we see. Um, this one runs on three double or triple A batteries. Um, it's a very simple system. It's got a viewfinder focus and then it's got a front end focus. It uses um, standard, you know, 1x optics in the front, an infrared emitter that you can turn on and off, and then the interface, which is on and off, and then you turn on the infrared emitter on and off. Now, the emitter doesn't go very far. It's like a flashlight, but in infrared. But, of course, you can also buy infrared flashlights. This is a, a Streamlight SuperTac IR. It's a spotlight that shoots out... Uh, hundreds of meters. Um, so I can actually use these two in combination to see something that is um, maybe 300 meters, 400 meters away. This thing, when I turn it on, um, and actually I often uh, back off this because it's hard to tell if it's on, what you'll see um, if, it's, if it's on is a, uh, a very slight color difference inside there and that tells me it's on um, this thing runs on um, crack it open here a pair of whoops, CR123 batteries right there and then when it's on it shoots out a very narrow beam um, you can see that's I can see it in my eye it's a light you might be able to see it it's coming on and off it's right in there. It's hard to see. I have to make it very dark. Um, but anyway, I can see this beam coming on and off. Let me try that. There you go. See that? That's turning it on. <clears throat> and because that's so hard to see, I'll often back it off. The way I do that is I turn it on. Um, so you can see that slight red. And then I back off the uh, battery cap till it goes off. And then I turn it off just to double check because it can get left on. But anyway, when I use this, I can shine this out and then this thing is just a standard um, infrared night vision imagery or imager. It's an early design, um, but it's very small. I mean, that's what that, that's the impact of this thing. And then I can use it with something like this to fire out to hundreds of meters and see uh, things fairly clearly. Um, but the other thing that's a little more fun is this Klein uh, thermal imager, which I did an unboxing on. Uh, this thing's pretty amazing. It came in this kind of goofy case, you know, whatever. I put it in a padded case and then protected the lenses. Um, this is where a lot of those rare earths come in. Um, why this stuff, the price is coming down, although this was 250 250 bucks, um, is because they're expensive. Um, as you can see, here's my controls. I can turn it on. Goes through the startup for a thermal imager. But this is amazingly small. No, you can't mount it on something, you know, that has a recoil. But um, it's a pretty cool design um, where you've got an in inborn screen here in, or onboard screen here. It gives you the temperatures because that's really what it's designed for. But you can obviously see things in the dark um, because it's picking up the... Uh, the infrared signature, it's giving it a false color based on, on the temperatures. Um, and then in here, wherever that is, 
uh, charging, but then you can also take pictures with it um, using a micro USB card. Um, so this I can point uh, through weeds, trees, etc. I could see deer at night, see people moving at night. Um, it doesn't really have a, a range, um, but it has an effective area. Um, and this one, because it's designed with uh, temperature in mind, you know, that's really what you're working with. But it certainly sees stuff very clearly in the dark. And it also can see, see through certain things like smoke, um, like brush. It cannot see through glass. You're pointed at glass and you basically see yourself because you're looking at a reflection of your own infrared signature. Um, but these are a hoot at night. Just a total... Uh, um, a game changer to be able to have something like this. Um, I'm using some, this is, this here is an Eagle Creek uh, circular case. It gives me some extra padding around the edges. I mean, it's a $250 device. I'm not just going to put it in this kind of cheap case. And then the Carson, I'm using a, um, this is a Case Logic uh, camera case. It's got a heavy duty uh, cover, kind of a thick cover here, a little softer on the back. Um, and that that just drops in so I can protect it. And then I've got my Streamlight flashlight. Um, but anyway, these are a lot of fun to use both in the shop and outdoors. And I would highly recommend uh, some of these new modern small featured, or, or excuse me, small, small form factored um, uh, thermal imagers and night vision. Um, because they serve most of our needs. If you need something more advanced, then you probably look, should look elsewhere, especially on YouTube. There's all kinds of reviews about the different things. But this little, these are about 100 bucks. This was about 80 bucks. This was about 250 bucks. So when you're thinking about the power of thermal imagery um, or night vision at that price point, uh, it's pretty incredible. So it's a good way to get involved in it. Anyway, with that, Doc out.